History is full of missing treasure stories, and tales about treasure finds abound in equal measure. While a larger percentage of lost treasure is never found, we are fascinated by the tales of found treasure. Yes, we are fascinated, and the ability of such stories to hold us spellbound has continued into modern times. But we no longer hear tales of pirates and Indiana Joneses. The treasure finds are less extraordinary, but still captivating. It matters little. Whether discovered underwater or on land, these treasure finds are often tickets to a better life if found by individuals, or academic records if found by archaeologists, or both. In this video, we will be looking at some of the most interesting treasure finds. You don't want to leave before the end because number three would blow your mind. The Sally In 2016, the wreck of a cargo ship, the Sally, reappeared on a North Devon beach after capsizing 200 years ago and was excavated. Its rotting lumber jutted out to the sand at low tide, decaying remnants of the shipwreck of September 1769. Acting on the advice of maritime archaeologists at Historic England, the British government granted protection to the Sally. The gesture prevents looting and illegal claims of ownership of the wreck. Two other shipwrecks, a nearby Severn Tro and another on the south coast, were also granted protection. The Sally met its end on Northam Burrows, but fortunately its crew was rescued. Northam Burrows now bears the name of Charles Kingsley's best-selling novel, Westward Ho. It was renamed by a Victorian developer as a promotional stunt to garner interest in his project. A Bristol wine merchant was left heartbroken by the Sally wreck. Most of the ship's cargo had been wine barrels, and we can guess that the merchant had a substantial claim to it. Several wine barrels were salvaged and claimed by the local landowner. The timbers of the wreck have appeared in the past during the lowest tides of the year, keeping walkers and beachgoers spellbound. In the 1940s, it was suggested that the wreck had Viking origins, but Mark Dunkley, an archaeologist at Historic England, is convinced it is the Sally. He also believes part of the ship's cargo still lies at the lowest part of the ship. The Sally wreck was unfortunate, and at first it seemed unnatural actions had caused the shipwreck. North Devon was infamous in the past for wreckers who deceived ships by setting up lights, fooling them into thinking they were approaching a safe harbor. Sally had driven into the beach stern first, despite the sailors' attempts to lighten her, which we now know from her exceptionally well-preserved timbers. Dunkley, however, believes bad luck was involved rather than any villainy. His theory is that Sally was caught on a high tide which receded and left the ship stranded, as the following low tide could not float her off again. The other historic wrecks were in less compromising circumstances. The Severn Tro is the 18th century merchant ship that was the backbone of the area, shipping everything from food to building materials. The second boat was found at the mouth of the Axe River. It was a pre-17th century boat, but in the 15th or 16th century, a critical find. It was well preserved and offers insights into how medieval shipwrights worked. The Largest Telephone Graveyard the red telephone box was an emblem of British culture before the advent of mobile phones in the 1990s made it obsolete. The iconic telephone boxes, indistinguishable in the general post office approved cherry red, once numbered over 73,000 in the UK. Today, they have been abandoned and turned into derelict pieces of Victorian technology. Fortunately, a local restoration is making strides at saving this endangered species. Just outside Redhill, next to a Surrey railway track, 30 minutes from Kent, is Britain's largest telephone box graveyard. After enduring decades of neglect and rusty all over, the telephone boxes are being restored by Unicorn Restorations. It is hard work. The staff spends 30 hours stripping off the boxes, repainting them in the same cherry red, and installing new glass to finish the restoration. The restored boxes, reminiscent of the bustling 20th century London scene, are sold for £4,000 or £20,000 when more seasoned plans are done. The company works with three models of red telephone boxes, and each has its own backstory, which gives dimension to the iconic telephone kiosks. The K2 is the oldest of the three and was produced in 1926. The K8 was the last model of the three to be manufactured. It began to appear in British streets in 1968 and has a more modern design to appeal to the 1960s scene. Coming between the K2 and K8 is the K6. It is the most easily recognized of the three and can be considered the stereotypical image of the telephone box. 
Designed by Sir Giles Gilbert Scott in 1935, it was a ubiquitous part of the 20th century Britain society with 60,000 installed across the country. Today, there are only 21,000 left in the UK. Unicorn Restorations redesign the interiors of these kiosks. The dial center can be personalized to carry your current number and an old exchange number. The company's restored phone kiosks have gained significant attention and have been used as props in movies like Harry Potter and Paddington. The Saddle Ridge Hoard Not all treasures come with adventurous treasure hunting or from faraway places. Sometimes all you need to do is take a walk and you will stumble on one of the greatest treasure finds in modern history. It's a one in a million choice, but that is what happened to California couple Mary and John. While walking their dog on their property, Mary and John found a rusted can that piqued their curiosity. They dug the can out and to their amazement, inside the can was 1,411 gold coins. The coins, they would find out later, were worth approximately $10 million. Their discovery is the largest treasure find in the United States. The coins are in good condition despite being minted between 1847 and 1894. It is believed that they were not yet in circulation before being buried. Their $10 million price, even though they have a face value of $28,000, is due to their excellent condition and rarity. Now known as the Saddle Ridge Hoard, the lost treasure raised questions that still remain unanswered. Why was so much money buried? Who buried them? Why did they not come back to get them? Some of the coins were minted in Georgia. How did they get to California? One hypothesis is that a bank employee had stolen about $30,000 worth of gold coins from a San Francisco bank in 1901. The bank robbery is a plausible theory given the timing and value of the coins, but the U.S. Treasury disagrees. According to the Treasury, none of the coins can be traced to any bank robbery. This rules out the possibility that the treasure is a hoard from the 1901 robbery. Two more scenarios have also been proposed. The first is that the coins are the life savings of a miner from the gold rush era, but the fact that the gold rush period period and the time the coins were buried do not correspond rules out this possibility. This leaves the second story, which is more likely, although less extraordinary than the first three. The coins may belong to a previous owner of the couple's home who was wealthy enough to accumulate such wealth but did not trust banks. Hence, he hid his wealth and died without revealing its location. Unfortunately, the answers to these questions surrounding Saddle Ridge Hoard may never be found. The location of the coins and the identity of those who found them are secret. Americans would have to be satisfied with the fantasy of taking a walk and becoming millionaires overnight. The Staffordshire Hoard In July 2009, an Anglo-Saxon treasure hoard was discovered in a field in Litchfield by an amateur metal detectorist. It was obvious that it was not your regular archaeological find, but it brought more questions than answers. Who built up such a treasure trove only to bury it in a field? Why were they buried? Why were they deformed? It took over a decade of analysis before archaeologists finally found answers to their questions. They revealed it in a study, the first major academic work on the Staffordshire hoard. The authors of the study identified a Mercian king as a previous owner of the hoard. They also suggested a connection to the dynasty of Raidwall, a rival Anglo-Saxon king who was buried in Sutton Hoo, the most famous site from that period. Chris Fern, the lead researcher of the project, noted that the discovery was a war hoard. The Anglo-Saxon kingdoms of Mercia, Northumbria, and East Anglia battled for supremacy between AD 600 and AD 650. The treasure was most likely buried royal treasure of the Kingdom of Mercia, which looted Northumbria and East Anglia during a battle. Among the finds were Christian objects like a huge procession cross and a gold and garnet ornament. The former was evidence that Christian paraphernalia was used as tallyman during the battle. The gold and garnet ornament, which is part of the bishop's headpiece, was desecrated before burial. Byrne claimed that the Staffordshire treasure alters the previous understanding of the Anglo-Saxon armies. The discovery of several gold pommels among the 700 items found tells a different story from what we understand. It was previously thought that gold weapons were limited to rulers, but the discovery showed that it was also common among warriors. But the elephant in the room remains. Who buried the treasure? All evidence points to King Penda, a ruthless Mercian king that ruled for 30 years until his death in AD 655. He defeated and killed the stepson and nephew of East Anglican King Raidwall in his power grab. A strong king, he could have accumulated the treasure from his battles with East Anglia. The 1750 Treasure Fleet 
1750 treasure fleet was discovered 30 miles north of West Palm Beach by a group of skilled treasure hunters known as the Schmitz. Along with the wreck came gold artifacts, including a rare $1 million coin intended for the King of Spain. A hurricane destroyed the 1715 treasure fleet, which left Havana, Cuba, almost exactly 300 years ago, and the treasures were found on board. Brent Brisbane, the proprietor of the 1750 Fleet Queen's Jewels LLC, asserts, These finds are important not only for their monetary value, but also for their historical importance. The artifacts included a 51-coin gold chain that was 41 feet long and about 15 feet deep in the water. Divers have discovered approximately $50 million worth of treasure since the ship was recovered more than 50 years ago, and it is believed that more than $400 million worth of treasure may still be hidden beneath the sea. Sadly, the entire fleet's salvaging rights are owned by Queen's Jewels, LLC. Oldest Treasure Ever In a town in the Dominican Republic, an elderly man was selling what turned out to be the oldest coin ever made in the New World. Thus began the story of the oldest shipwreck treasure ever discovered. Using side-scan sonar, the Deep Blue Marine team searched the area where the local man found the coin. Their search was successful, and they found a trove of treasure that included jade sculptures, antiquated Mayan ornaments, and gold coins from 1535. The coins were worth millions of dollars. The Dominican Republic and the treasure hunters split the haul into two equal parts. Experts believe the ship was capsized by a hurricane, en route to the newly discovered New World. The Opal Treasure The Opal Treasure was discovered by Dr. Elat Mazar in 2013 during an excavation at the Opal in Jerusalem. In one of the most high-profile excavations in the field of biblical archaeology, Dr. Mazar and her team would uncover a thrilling collection. The Opal, which translates as a high place to climb, is the area between the City of David and the Temple Mount. It has been called by this name since the first temple period and is talked about in the Bible. There have been many excavators before Mazar, from Captain Charles Warren to Dame Kathleen Kenyon to Dr. Mazar's grandfather, Benjamin Mazar. The opal has intrigued so many, but Dr. Elliot Mazar's discoveries outmatch those of her predecessors. The opal team uncovered a gold cache, the dream of every archaeologist. It features a menorah, shofar, and a Torah scroll. The star of the collection is a gold medallion that would sell for a high price at the auctions. There were also 36 gold coins dating to the Byzantine era, gold and silver jewelry, and gold ingots. The treasure was found in a 6th century Byzantine structure. Mazar believes that the hoard was hidden during the Persian conquest of Jerusalem in 614, a short-lived but violent conquest. It is the third gold hoard found in Jerusalem, and in the collection is the earliest Torah ornament found in an excavation. The days of pirates wearing eye patches and yelling, ahoy, may be over. But treasures still abound in the world. Sometimes they are found in the least expected places, other times from well-researched treasure hunts. Either way, you cannot tell when you might end up with a haul of gold coins that would change your life forever. Thanks for staying with us. Remember to give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the notification bell to avoid missing out on future updates coming to your feed. Thanks again for watching, and bye for now.